Hi and welcome to my channel Budget Audio Review. Now today's video touches back on an old video I did about connecting up your old amplifier to your TV, to your game console, to your Virgin Box, etc. Uh, an item you know that hasn't got the RCA, the old RCA outputs. I'll just show you a picture of them RCA outputs on the screen now. Hasn't got them as the output of the device. So for instance, your Virgin Box or your Skybox or your TV hasn't got them outputs, but you want to run it through to your old amplifier, an amplifier that hasn't got a digital input, a coax input, or something like that. So you still want to run it through that, but you want a little bit of control over it. You want to be able to adjust the volume. Now your particular amplifier or receiver, etc., hasn't got a volume control. It comes through no remote, so you're kind of stuck. If you do use a normal box, you're kind of stuck. Uh, wherever you put that volume, that's the volume going to come out of your speakers. Now with this particular digital analog box, it just kind of like ups it a level or two and gives you a little bit of a remote control here with it as well. So just for instance, just to show you a quick demo and to uh, see if this video is actually for you and if it is you may want to hang about and I'll show you how I connected it up, what the box is, how it works and what I thought of it. So uh, just for instance, I'm just going to play a video here that I always play on my uh, demo things. Uh, so I'll just play this video here, this is on YouTube. So I'm sitting here, I'm going to share, hopefully this microphone's picking it up and it's kind of like medium volume. Now I've turned it up a few notches. Now there's a knock on the door or your missus wants to have a word with you or something like that or you just want to generally turn it down. And there you go, we got it back down to zero. And uh, you may have a chat, you may go and answer the door, etc. You may have to go in that direction because I mean the amplifier is only over there, but uh, you may not fancy going over there. Or someone may have rung you up on the phone, save you getting up, had the conversation, and we're back to listen to the film or whatever it is your game console, the uh, movie channel, whatever it is you're listening to. You're back in control listening to that particular station, etc. So I'm just going to pause this. And just tell you very quickly before I actually show you all this, how it wires up and uh, a little bit more about it, is that uh, what I've done here is set my amplifier, I think it's about number two or three. So when this is at maximum, the maximum volume is actually set by my amplifier, set to volume two or three. It's not going to go any higher than that because that is the maximum volume on my amplifier that I've chosen. But obviously my amplifier goes up to number 10. So I could turn it up to number five or six or say, and just control the volume with this between five and six, uh, between zero and six kind of thing in steps. I mean, when you press a button here, it kind of goes up in little steps and that's what would happen. So if you had this at 50%, 50% the signal will be going to your amplifier, thus it'll be about half volume and you've got your amplifier say set at number six. So really it's about number three. So you get the drift. So uh, the max, the, the, the most volume, uh, you can't overstep the volume, let's put it that way. The, the, you know, wherever you've got your amplifier set, say two or three on the dial or four, you won't be able to go past that using this remote control, obviously. This just, you know, this just controls the output from that little digital to analog converter box. Just, you know, it kind of regulates it from zero up to 100% in steps. And obviously, depending where your amplifier volume is, that's how loud it's actually gonna be when it goes through your speakers. I think you'll get an idea. I'll go through it a bit up close and personal now and uh, talk you through it. So here's two different boxes. I put two here at the moment, and this is an old one. I say old one, it's you know still available. It's just an old one I did about a year ago now, I think, on the channel, uh, showing you how to connect this up to different scenarios, DVD player, etc. Plus another few ways of actually getting sound out of a DVD player, TV, game console, and that, without like, using one of these. So if you find that video interesting, I'll put a link at the top. But the main difference between these two, I'm just going to show you the two differences, then we're going to concentrate on this box. This one here has only got one input, even though it says two, optical and coax. And in today's video, I'm really going to concentrate on the optical inputs on both these boxes. But coax is going to be pretty much the same, really. Instead of plugging it into the optical input here, you're going to plug it into the coax input, and you're going to have a coax lead rather than a digital lead. And a coax lead is basically... Um, just one lead that's going to have one of these on each end, just going to have one of them uh, little phono leads, RCA connectors on each end. And uh, that's going to go into the uh, and into the back of your TV or DVD player. But today we're going to be concentrating on the optical, but like I say, there is an option for the coax. And if you want to look at that coax a bit more, that is on that video that I'm talking about where I've done this about a year ago. I'll go more detail on that coax. But like I say, today's really about this box and the volume control. So this box here, one input, the one output, and it's got no volume whatsoever. So 
you know, it's a fixed output. So uh, whatever you've got your amplifier turned on to, say number five or six or four or whatever it is, that's the volume you're going to get out. There's no way of controlling that volume. I just want to tell you one more thing about this box. It's got an headphone socket here, and the headphones out of this particular box is quite loud. So if you're thinking about connecting a pair of headphones up to your TV, this is not a bad little box to do it. It's quite loud, got no control over the volume though. So if you wanted to control the volume, you'd have to use the volume control on your headphones, an inline volume control, where you may have a little volume control on the side of each ear, something like that. You would need a pair of headphones like that to control the volume. If not, it's going to be stuck at fairly loud. But this box here is the one we're going to be talking about today. And this has got four inputs now. Obviously only one at a time can be used, but uh, in here they've labeled it up toss link rather than here saying, let's just turn that around, saying optical toss link rather than, but they're both exactly the same. So I'm going to refer to this as optical rather than toss link. So this is going to be optical. I'm going to be calling these. So you've got three optical inputs labeled up toss link and also the coaxial input as well. And you've got a little select button here. So you can press that select button like so, and it'll move along to each individual input. Also, that is controlled by the remote control as well. You can do exactly the same with that on the remote control. You can pick your four inputs down the bottom there. You've got a volume up and down control. So the volume output on this through the RCA or through uh, another little output here called auxiliary, I'll come to that in a minute, you can control the volume. You can do it on the front here, or again, you can do it with this remote control, which is what we're talking about today, really sitting back, relaxing, and do it on the remote control. Also on the remote control, you've got a mute button as well. So you can actually mute the sound rather than turn it down. You just want to quickly mute it. You can press mute, but there's no mute control on the front. Going around to the back, obviously you've got uh, your inputs there selected. So here's the actual inputs here you're going to connect up. You've got your coax and you've got your free optical, labeled up toss link, but we're going to call them optical. You've got your power, you've got your left and right audio out, your analog out, and you've got an auxiliary out. Where it differs from the headphones out here, this auxiliary out is at line level, and it's pretty low. So if you plugged a pair of headphones here, and they're not going to sound very loud at all. This is really for a 3.5 millimeter jack to another 3.5 millimeter jack or to an RCA lead to, to connect up to something else, maybe another amplifier or uh, maybe one of these portable speakers that's got a 3.5 millimeter jack input, something like that that would go in there but we're going to be concentrating in on these two outputs here right what comes in the box with both of these obviously this one comes with a remote but uh, just going to show you what comes with both you're going to get a little lead here and the reason i mentioned this lead this is your power cable for these is to plug into the power here a little micro usb here to a normal usb here in the video i'll show you me connecting this lead for the power to one of these this is just a normal five volt uh, apple uh, plug uh, that plugs into the mains. I mean, you may have a different one, you may have another make a Nokia or something like that, your iPhone, you know, a phone one or something like that you use. Uh, and this just plugs into there, then into the mains, and that would power the unit. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is that uh, this also could plug into a USB socket, maybe on the back of your TV or your cable box. For instance, here is one on the back of my cable box. So rather than plugging into this, you may have the option of actually plugging it into your TV back or your cable box, and that would power this unit instead of using one of these. So taking up one plug socket less, plus the added advantage when you turn your TV off, if it's plugged into the TV, or when you turn your cable box off, when it's plugged into the cable box, this unit will go off as well, where if you left it plugged in, it's gonna stay on all the time. So it's got that added advantage, gonna take up just a little bit of electricity. Over the course of a period of time, you're probably gonna save yourself a penny a year or something like that, but it's still a little bit less and uh, you've got more control over it, maybe that way. And it's a bit easier, a bit less, you know, clumbersome and more, you know, pl more plugs being used and that. So you can do that. But in the, in the course of this video, I'm actually still using this because not everyone's got that option to plug it into the back of the TV. So if I go and show you how to wire it up and plug this into the back of the TV, someone's going to go, oh, that don't, I ain't got that. I'm, I'm knackered now. But uh, so I'm going to be using this throughout the video. Also in the box is the digital cable that comes with it. And that's like that. That's going to plug into the digital output, sorry, the digital input of this and the digital output of your particular device. You will get a toss link, sorry, not a toss link cable, a coax cable, which is just basically one of these each end, something like that. And that would plug in to the coaxial of this device and into the output of your unit in the coax uh, socket. But uh, like so I'm only really just showing you that here. It's more explained in another video. Today we're gonna be concentrating the optical. Also in the box, 
you're going to get some phono cables here if I just put it across like so and these are for the inputs and outputs of so the output of this they will plug into like that and this will plug into the input of your amplifier that will be explained in the video as we go along but as you can see this particular cable is red and black and the one I'm going to be using in the video just to make it a bit easier I think for anyone that's following along because these are color coded red and white so I'm actually going to be using an old red and white cable as you can see they're red and white I'm going to be using red and white but uh, if you've got this cable in the box you know some of them come with a red and white cable some of them come with black and red the red's red and the black is white so uh, if you've got one of these where well, you connect the red to the red and the black to the white okay so um, but during the course of the video I'll be using this cable okay uh, let's get on with it okay so this is uh, my virgin box now yawn could be a sky box could be any kind of cable box and you have a pretty similar uh, connections at the back to this one I would have thought where the cable here goes from the wall into here we've got the audio out here via 3.5 millimeter jack a SCART output HDIM output that goes to my TV a USB here which may be for updating sorry about the shadow for updating etc internet connection here the digital audio out here this is the one we're looking at the power and the power switch so we'll be concentrating on the digital audio output and we're going to take the cable that comes with this little box. Here's the little box here again. I've just shown you this uh, earlier, but this is the little box. We're going to pick any of the three inputs. It's got three inputs at the back, like I say, so we can actually connect three different items. So if you just excuse my arms and everything, so what we're going to do, we're going to plug our cable that comes with it into here. Now this only goes in one way, so we'll just squiddle about, and you'll soon see it pushes in nice and firmly. So that's in there, the digital output on my Virgin box. Like I say, this could be your cable box. And this goes into any of the free inputs on this box here. You can choose any of the free. So we're just going to make it nice and easy and do input number one. So we push that in there. Like I say, it only goes in one way. So if we don't go in that way, we turn it round. And so we get a nice clicking sound and it's clicked in position there. So now it's connected. If I just move this lead out of the way. The digital output from my Virgin box into the digital input on this digital to analog converter. Now this has to be plugged into the wall. And it comes with a cable. I say plugged into the wall, it's just a USB cable actually. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of connecting this up as well in the video as we go along to your TV connection. But on this particular connection, we're going to plug it in the back here. That's the power input there. And here's the other end. And we're going to just use any adapter, uh, a 5 volt USB adapter. This is for an iPhone. And that's just going to plug in like so. You can see that. And that's just going to plug in to your wall unit, your wall socket, your extension lead, etc. And the output of this will connect up to your amplifier. This is an RCA output, excuse my thumbs and fingers, uh, these leads getting in the way. That's going to plug in white to white and red to red. Now, your particular lead at the end, at the end of your lead, you may have not a, a red and white one like this. Sometimes they come in red and black. So it's red to red and black to the actual white on this connection here. But if you've got a lead like this, red and white, it's nice and easy, red and white. So you've got the left and right in the right position. You're not gonna get the right channel coming out the left and the left coming out the right. And these two connections here, just plug straight in to the back of your amplifier, which I'm just gonna show you now. Okay, so this is the back of my amplifier. Just to recap, here's the Virgin box on top. I'll put it on top here, tapping away on my finger. This is my amplifier here. This is an old Sansu amplifier just with RCA connections at the back. There's the speaker outputs, obviously. You're gonna know how to wire them up. Just gonna show you me plugging it into the back of this amplifier. So there is my connections coming from that box. Here they are here, from that little digital analog box. And we've got them two connections there. I'm gonna use the auxiliary. So we're just gonna plug it in right and left there on the side, right and left. So the right is always red, red, right. That goes in there. And the white or black, depending what lead you got, goes to the left there. Push them nice and tight. I haven't done them too tight because the amplifier slide off the table. But that's how it's connected. On your amplifier, you're going to choose auxiliary as the input. And on your amplifier, you're going to turn the volume up to the maximum level that you want to listen to, uh, to the TV, to your uh, Virgin box, to your cable box, etc. Uh, to your game console, maybe PlayStation 3 or something like that, the maximum volume you want to listen to that to because you're going to have control from the maximum volume you've just set it right down to zero by using the little remote control that comes with this little audio 
uh, this sorry this little digital to audio little box this has got the volume this is going to adjust that volume from zero up to 100 percent and depending on what volume you've got this amplifier set at that is the maximum volume level you're going to rear so that's all set up on a little virgin box okay just quickly touch on your tv if you've got a tv with the digital output my digital outputs in this position here uh, you're maybe down the side here where my hdmi inputs are i've also got another hdi input here as well but there's my little digital output a little square box kind of thing i have a little label on it digital out or a little sign like this and you're just going to plug the cable that comes with the digital analog converter this little digital cable and we're going to push it in until it fits it only goes in one way and as you can see i'm pulling it now and it won't come out it's nice and tight the other end of that cable obviously goes to your little box let's just lift the box up so you can see it and that goes into any one of them three inputs in this particular box if you've only got a box with one input uh, then it's obviously only going to go into one input but here we're going to use input say number three just to make it easier for me to show you a couple of other things input number three we're going to add some power to the box and it comes with a little micro usb cable and we're going to plug the usb cable into the power so that's the power and that usb cable the other end will go to a little uh, 5 volt adapter which you're going to plug in your wall to power the box the other two outputs now this box as you can see are red and white and we're going to plug our red and white lead red to red RCA lead phono lead whatever you want to call it into them and that's then plugged into them and the other end I've got dangling here in front of me just showing you on camera that's going to be plugged in to your amplifier left and right input so that's the TV wired up Okay, in this part of the video, I'm gonna show you how to connect up a PlayStation 3 to an old amplifier using this digital to analog converter box that's got a volume control uh, built into it. Now, uh, I honestly think this is probably more for people that uh, wanna connect up their TV or their uh, cable box rather than a PlayStation 3 or a games console, but it may come in handy if you so wish and you wanna use the digital output to connect up to an old amplifier. So we're gonna do exactly the same as we have in the other video. It's gonna be a little bit cack handed here. Sorry about the light, my hand may get in the way a little bit, but I will take some pictures. This cable here, the uh, little digital cable, plugs into the back of the PlayStation. There, and there it is in the PlayStation. Hopefully you can see that nice and tightly in there. You can only put it in one way, don't forget. The other end of that will plug into your little digital to analog uh, converter box, which I'm just gonna put here. Hopefully you can see that okay. So on this particular model, we can have three different inputs. We're just gonna put it into input three, just to make it a bit easier for me to show you everything else with this box. So that's there in input number three, nice and tight. Of course, this box has got to be powered. So the power, we're gonna plug the power adapter in. It's just a USB, mini USB cable. And that goes in there like so. Not always easy for me to see what I'm doing, but there you go. The other end of this is like I said before, just a USB connection. And you can use your old iPhone adapter or any other adapter you got. And we're gonna plug that in there. Hopefully like so. So it's plugged in there and that just plugs into the wall. It'd obviously be different if you're in America or somewhere like that, the plug on the end of it, but uh, that's basically what happens there. Now we've got a pair of phono cables uh, and we're gonna plug white into white and red into red. So there's the white into white and there is the red into red. And from there we've got the other end and that's gonna go into your amplifier and we're gonna use auxiliary on this amplifier here. So uh, we put in the right channel was red, red for right, RR, and the white is the left channel and there it is plugged into your amplifier in auxiliary and you can put it in tuner if you wanted to or another input but i've chose auxiliary so obviously on your amplifier choose auxiliary you can have your speakers wired up turn your volume your amplifier to the maximum volume you want the unit to go up to and this will go between zero and the maximum volume you've set your amplifier to so that's it there connected up to a game console